Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Red Raptor Writes. Today I'm going to do another reaction video. A lot of you like the one from when I reviewed Dinosaurs with Stephen Fry. That was that was kind of a train wreck. <laughs> so um, I got a lot of recommendations actually before I started reacting to things to react to Tirzu's video about dinosaurs where Tirzu ranks the different types of dinosaurs. Uh, there are a few thoughts before I really dive into this. First of all, like everything, I've seen people on Twitter complain about Tirzu, and some of the arguments are understandable that um, it's kind of impossible to rank animals and dinosaurs because they're all adapted to their environment and their particular niche, so it's really unfair to rank different creatures based on our own standards that we come up with, but I'm, I'm kind of a fan of Tirzu. I, I know he gets a lot of hate, but I, I do like Tirzu, and I'm subscribed, as you can see. And I, I like when another video drops. It's it's silly. You can make decent arguments about it. Yeah, those arguments are valid. But it's it's a fun way to get across information about zoology. Um, so usually, I I am a fan. It's it's goofy, but kind of works. I like it. Except for this dinosaur tier list, which is why I'm reacting to it. Um, I should also point out that there was another channel, uh, I believe his name is Harris Sang, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, and he recently did a reaction to this same video. I am a fan of his channel, I watch his channel regularly, he often um, makes fun of, comments on, reacts to different dinosaur videos on YouTube, different documentary stuff, and I like watching his content. But I didn't watch this one because I didn't want his to influence mine. The moment I'm done with this video, I will go back and watch his, so go check it out if you haven't. But it's just a coincidence that we released them at similar times. This might be like a month later-ish. Um, and lastly, Yes, I, I have seen this video before, so I know what uh, points Tirzu will talk about. So I've kind of prepared in my head already points that I want to bring up. So this isn't a fresh reaction reaction. This is more of a revisiting, a review of this video. But with all that out of the way, let's dig this up. The dinosaur clips in this video are from documentaries you can find on CuriosityStream. More on them at the end of the video. Oh great, this was the age when uh, Curiosity Stream was all the rage. Everyone was talking about it. <laughs> I, I do like the Breath of the Wild stuff here. Again, I, I do like this format, um, but it it is kind of silly to apply to animals. But it's fun though, it's fun. Also, I should point out that I'm going to be a jerk and kind of annoying, constantly pausing it and then commenting, just so I don't get copyright stricken. I, I know, it, it must get annoying sometimes, but just trying to be safe here. Um, it is interesting that you saw the Choadon using its claw to restrain prey, which kind of a smaller scale version of Raptor prey restraint. It's not a Jomea sword, it's a Choadontid. Ugh, anyways, Choadon's a mess, and we'll probably have to talk about it later. Uh, but if you're gonna use a Choadon clip, why use such an inaccurate one? Like, a scaly Choadon? Come on. Also, I should point out that um, this video came out in 2019, so I'll have to kind of adjust my thinking to three, nearly four years ago. Dinosaurs were some of the most powerful builds to ever be introduced to the game, while other factions like the Mammal Guild and Arthropod Guild have come up with some pretty impressive ones. It's perhaps their most notable trait, there was also a ton of variety in the abilities and- There were many dinosaurs that were small. I think most of them were at least shorter, smaller than a full adult human. In combat strategies that these builds employed, of dinosaur builds, so there's no way I can cover all of them. 
but I definitely... No, I want to see the tier zoo where he covers over 700 species of dinosaur and ranks them all accordingly. We'll try to hit the important ones. And so during this huge stretch of time, dinosaur maids basically tried out every conceivable strategy, and that's why there are so many builds to talk about. At the bottom, we've got Dryosaurus and Camptosaurus. <laughs> like always, they put Dryosaurus on the bottom, and JPOG, and Evolution, Prehistoric Kingdom, here, Dryosaurus is always the lowest tier there is. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Two very similar herbivore builds, with an interesting stat spread. Dinosaurs are known for their immense strength, but neither of these builds boast any sort of offensive capabilities. I mean, I don't know about that. Even... Well, the Dryosaur specimen that we have is still young, but fully grown individuals would be like the size of a horse. I wouldn't want to fight a horse. That sounds like a losing battle. I'm not one of those guys that say, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna punch out a grizzly bear. <laughs> no. I still wouldn't want to fight a Dryosaur. That's a losing battle. Instead, they have a modest but below average defensive spread, decent mobility, and above average intelligence for a dinosaur. These builds took advantage of how powerful the other herbivore builds were. They also took advantage of the fact that- Yeah, it's an interesting idea that Dryasaurus would have used Stegosaurus for protection. I forget where that came from. I'd have to double check that if there's like any basis for that from Planet Dinosaur. They were faster than other herbivores, even though their mobility was lower than most predator builds. Their higher intelligence granted them more advanced perception, but nonetheless, these builds were helpless on their own, and were easy targets for predator mains if they were ever caught. Oh, I don't think I'd call them helpless. Again, still like a horse-sized animal, can still run away, and most predator attempts at hunting fail, even if it is against Dryosaurus. That's just the way the world works. Caught undefended. Their lack of self-sufficiency puts them in F tier, in my opinion. I think they realized this, though, because later on, this faction started specking into either extra armor on their heads or spikes on their thumbs, giving them much better options for dealing with aggressive players. Well, I don't know if I would say that these Iguanodontians, like Dryosaurus, Camptosaurus, would turn into Pachycephalosaurus, because that's a marginocephalian, more like Triceratops and other Ceratopsians, rather than an Iguanodont. They're all Ornithischians, but different places in Ornithischia. In D tier, we've got two carnivore builds, the first being Coelophysis. Coelophysis was one of the first dinosaur builds that the devs introduced. Oh, and Coelophysis. Like all the early dinosaurs, it really was nowhere near the power level of the ones that would be added. One of the first, though? Uh, I mean, yeah, it comes in the late Triassic, but there were still uh, some of those... Early dinosaurs beforehand in like the middle Triassic, like Herrerasaurus, Eoraptor, the one from Africa, I can't pronounce this name right now, it's on the tip of my tongue. ...to the game later in the Jurassic and Cretaceous expansions. The only reason it became such a popular and dominant build was because it starved and dehydrated more slowly than its non-dinosaur rivals. And this isn't to say that it didn't struggle to succeed too, it absolutely did. And uh, but that is a good point, that um, dinosaurs might have been better adapted to survive the Triassic Jurassic extinction because they can retain water better than the other animals in the environment. I often had to resort to team killing just to get by. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, this this has been a popular thing to show in Coelophysis for decades now. And this Walking with Dinosaurs clip is based on this that they thought that uh, a young Coelophysis was. Young Coelophysis was in the stomach cavity of an older Coelophysis. I believe what happened was that it was a different type of archosaur, or was it that there was an adult on top of the young one? I, I think it was a different type of archosaur. I'll, I'll double check that. Braille. It sort of dominated the early dino meta by default, so I'm not going to rate it any higher than D tier. Also in D tier, we have Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus <laughs> is a unique build that's so, heavily- I, I knew that one was coming. This one's controversial. I'm sure if I scroll down into the comments, people will complain about this. Fishing abilities and aquatic adaptations, including the rare ability of electroreception, which helped it catch fish players. Okay. Um, I think this is where the date comes in the play here. This is 2019. The date always comes into play with Spinosaurus because it's constantly changing. 
Uh, this is 2019. The whole quadrupedal debate has exploded. The tail's been found. I think that was 2018. There was a debate over the sail, whether it looked like this or was more like M-shaped. And why the wrist pronated here? Come on. But Tirzu still has it like that 2000 Spinosaurus, where it's basically a large baryonyx, but with a sail on it. No, at this point we knew how different and how weird Spinosaurus was. Even when they were in stealth mode. This is great for that specific application, but Spinosaurus mains weren't actually fully aquatic. They couldn't breathe underwater and still had to spend plenty of their gameplay, dealing with the challenges of being a terrestrial- Yeah, he still used the Planet Dinosaur one. Which was good for its time, but... Come on. ...real build. And unfortunately, their stats and abilities leave a lot to be desired in terms of contending with the terrestrial meta at that time. They'd secured themselves a unique niche at the cost of being able to hold their own in general combat. Oh. Oh, an ad. Okay, I'll wait for this to pass and then I'll talk. They'd get bodied by most- Dang, I got hit by the double ad there. ...other carnivore mains and outsped by most herbivore mains, leaving them in an awkward position. If I mean, not really. Are we judging the dinosaurs on how well they could fight each other? I don't- I don't really think that should be the criteria here. Spinosaurus lived in North Africa and maybe South America during like the Turonian, Cenomanian stages of the late Cretaceous, about like 99 to 95 million years ago. It- it lives in a wetland environment with lots of fish and lots of rivers and swamps and it was adapted for life in its environment. It was very well adapted. Spinosaurus teeth are very common, even if the rest of the skeleton is not, unfortunately. They, they, they had it going on, just like Stacy's mom. I, I don't know why they'd be in D tier. They were too adapted for their environment. Like, or they couldn't fight Carcharodontosaurus particularly well. I mean, come on. Come on, man. If they'd had more time, they might have been able to gain enough experience to spec into a fully aquatic build. The lesson here is that if you ever find yourself specking into the playstyle of an amphibian, you may want to reconsider how you're spending your evolution points. <laughs> Frogs in F tier. Oh, come on. Okay, koalas are something I can see in F tier, right? You, you spec only into eating poisonous leaves from eucalyptus and the eucalyptus in your own neighborhood <laughs> all right that's that i could see but um for spinosaurus what it was too well adapted for its environment it lived in a uh, wetland environment it's and it was good at what it did just the world changed and maybe that's a lesson for us sometimes we need to change too uh whatever getting sentimental we have the hadrosaurus now i don't have a ton to say about boo Boo, really? The Hadrosaurs? Generally, their main game plan is pretty simple. See a predator coming and run away. This is pretty similar to the Dryosaurus. Bruh. Bruh, they don't need to just run away. When you're a giant Shantungasaurus, <laughs> you don't really need to run away. The Hadrosaurus playstyle I mentioned in F tier. But instead of relying on the more powerful herbivores to defend them, they had the HP required to shrug off a hit or two. Overall, this build was pretty easy to play, but had a low skill ceiling as well, since they had no actual combat abilities. All in all, there's a reason players consider Hadrosaurus more forgettable among dinosaur builds. That's mean. In C tier, we've got- No, no, no. Hadrosaurus should be, like, at least A tier. Oh, I'm falling into the trap now of ranking dinosaurs, but whatever. I mean, their, their absolute abundance and domination during the late Cretaceous should- this should be a sign, right? <laughs> no, it shouldn't be D tier. They they don't just stand there, take hits, or just run away. I mean, it's... Hadrosaurs were big. These are big, bulky animals that can defend themselves against predators. I mean, if you're a Gorgosaurus, are you, are you seriously about to go up against, like, a big Parasaurolophus? It's bigger than you, and it's gonna clap you. And, and not to mention their ability to process food uh, with their teeth. They have... They have jaws that can actually like grind up and chew the food before they swallow. So that's an advantage that they have other over other herbivores in their environment. So they can process the vegetation better. They're advantaged. I mean, and they lived in herds. They they do move in herds. 
I don't get it. D tier? No, I, I don't see that. Two of the most famous Jurassic builds. The first is Stegosaurus. Taking a quick look at Stegosaurus. <laughs> Bruh. I mean, okay, the tail's not dragging, but that's still pretty droopy. And it's that high hipped Stegosaurus with the short neck. We know that they were more in line with other Stegosaurus with a longer neck. The body proportions weren't as dummy thick. Whatever. Whatever. Stats. It's clear that this build was extreme on many fronts. It had one of the lowest intelligence levels of any dinosaur, and also didn't exactly have much in terms of mobility either. Their back plates significantly reduced the chance of an attacker scoring a critical hit against them, since it's much- Okay, that's true, yeah. It's harder to grab them by the neck or on the back if you have plates. Harder to bite down on a Stegosaurus's weak point when there are plates in the way. Their back plates can also be flushed with- There's something in the way. With blood mm -hmm. to grant a large- I did that to a student once. When I was still a substitute, they were- I was subbing an art class, and they were drawing Batman. So then I tell them this joke, right? Um, I said, oh man, you know, I was trying to draw Batman this one time, but there was something in the way. <laughs> they got it, and they enjoyed it. Intimidation buff, which works great against Predator and herbivore mains alike. The Thagomizer is one of the most unique weapons of any dinosaur build. Th this is accurate. We actually have Allosaurus, is it a pelvis, a thigh bone, something like that, that has big holes in it that were probably smashed into there by a Stegosaurus spike, or Thagomizer, as you can call it. Often dealing enough damage to one-shot most players. Because it's a tail spike, this attack has a lot of reach, making approaching a defending Stegosaurus player extremely difficult. However, this- it, It's basically suicide. Don't fight a Stegosaurus. Strategy was by no means perfect. Their low mobility made fleeing from battle impossible, so if an enemy did not want to subvert its defenses, Stegosaurus mains would be out of options. And since their tails weren't long enough to cover an attack from the front, that was often their downfall. We don't know that they were, like, that dumb. Yeah, they had small brain to body size ratio, but... I don't know if they were that dumb. Also, why does this picture have the tail spikes pointing like upwards they should be like out here we have every stegosaurus main's arch enemy allosaurus the allosaurus build was unique in that uh, i know what's coming up here it comes actually invested very little into the bite attack only having the bite strength of a lion instead that's totally false outdated no <laughs> That, that's just an undated idea, outdated idea. Uh, they, they had a stronger bite force than that. I covered this in the last reaction to Dinosaurs with Stephen Fry. Allosaurus dealt damage by using its head like a battle axe. Swinging there its it is. Jaw down onto an enemy player. No, this is just a, such a stupid idea. And again, this is 2019. Should have known better. Maybe if this was 2001 when these ideas were just coming out or I don't know the exact year when this idea was pushed, but this had already been debunked so many times by this point. It's such a bad idea. If you're slamming your head, well, it's hard to get your head around, get your lower jaw around what you're trying to eat. You might just keep whacking it. And even if you do score a hit, you're hitting it with the, the front part of your upper jaw so that's like the least reinforced part and you're not getting all those teeth in there you're just you're just hitting it like this it, it's a bad idea and also you're just whacking your head into bone <laughs> your teeth are just gonna get stuck there and you're gonna be losing teeth so fast that you can't replace them quick enough you're just hurting your own face and hopefully you don't get injured and then infected infected in the mouth Injured in the mouth, then you can't hunt, and then you starve and die. <laughs> this is this, this is a ludicrous idea. I don't know why Tirzu just rolled with this. This dealt heavy damage, but was nowhere near the devastating power of some of the top tier dinosaur combat moves. It had the highest top speed of any build during its time, but had relatively low. St huh? I don't know. Allosaurus is the fastest. I mean, I guess it's quicker than me, probably, but fastest of any dinosaur in its time. Then you just talk about dry source? I don't know. In packs that could take down just about anything. 
packs. <laughs> um, Allosaurus, yeah, we find a lot of them in the same sites, but this doesn't mean they were in packs. It could be uh, a predator trap. Was it? Is it the Cleveland Lloyd Quarry that I'm thinking about? I, th I believe it's the Cleveland Lloyd Quarry where you have a lot of Allosauruses in one location. Uh, some speculate it's a predator trap, others speculate that it's like a watering source that they keep coming to and um, keep dying there and start killing each other. That's just the very basics of it. But packs? No. <laughs> Probably not for Allosaurus. If anything, they were very aggressive to each other and didn't tolerate one another tolerate each other guys in b tier we have a few builds which did the exact opposite of what allosaurus did in that they put a ton of evolution points into a single combat tactic first the build which specced into the claw skill tree granting it the longest claws to ever this, this is an interesting point right now i'll Just explain the why later therizinosaurs therizinosaurs were excellent in 1v1 combat because their claws gave them incredible reach and damage Perfect for slicing at the heads of carnivore mains that were trying to bite them. <laughs> oh, I love that Lego Yoda death yell. Oh, that's my childhood right there. Yeah, you lose the studs and everything. It's funny. Um, but there was a recent study that came out on Therizinosaurus claws and found that Therizinosaurus itself, its claws wouldn't have been able to bear the stresses of like smacking things and slashing things. There's some people who might refute this it's a new study and there's always pushback or support for it we'll see how this pans out but that's just where i am right now in the march of 2023 their slash attack was the strongest the game had ever seen in fact they put so many points into the claw skill tree that they had none left over for teeth or mobility and were actually forced to change teams from the okay he's talking in video game terms i don't really think this is how it works that because they had big claws they lost their teeth i don't think that's how it works but <laughs> change teams carnivore side to the herbivore side making them the only build from the theropod faction to opt not to be a predator mm. oh that's not so much mm. so We say that they became more herbivorous first and then developed those large claws to grab the branches and leaves and then bring it to its mouth. It out really well for them because they no longer had to compete with the other predator mains for XP. Sure, they were lacking in intelligence and mobility and also couldn't actually- <laughs> Same buddy, same. ...gain any experience from the enemies that they defeated with their claws. But all in all- I, I guess they can eat something if they wanted to. <laughs> Herbivores aren't like strictly herbivores. They they might chow down on some meat every once in a while. Oh, they had a surprisingly effective strategy. Not a perfect defense, as they were definitely still vulnerable to coordinated assaults, but definitely an above average build. We have the carnivore build that put all of its evolution points into maxing out the bite attack, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. T Rex as B tier. He can't keep getting away with it! He can't keep getting away with it! I forgot about this one. I thought it was going to be A tier. B tier? Are you kidding me? B tier. That that's wild right there. T-Rex had the most powerful bite attack in the history of the game. Able to take out any history of the game, history of the land game. Player is able to bite in a single hit. This also gave it the ability to crush bone. Let true. It... True. All right. Th this is factual. You can access the XP rich marrow inside similar to what hyenas do in today's meta. T-Rex was a hybrid between a predator and scavenger build. It did you don't need to mention that. <laughs> Most, if not all apex predators are hunter scavengers. They're opportunistic. When you're that big, you can't be too picky about what you're eating. If something's alive, you eat it. If something's dead, you eat it. Didn't have the if it's vegetables, you don't eat it. You can leave that alone. Greatest luck taking down the heavily armored herbivores of the Cretaceous expansion. As a scavenger, its massive size gave it the ability to steal kills from other carnivore players. <laughs> oh, Valley of the T Rex. Ugh, oh gosh. Who had no hope of surviving its devastating bite if they got in its way. And it also wasn't particularly fast outside of short Well, the arms are still pretty strong. Um, they can still curl, what was it, 500 pounds, something like that? Something like that. 
So they were strong. They were being used for something. It's just, what was that something? Was it just for picking up their body? Was it used for mating? Both? Still debated. Still, with team strats, it was near unstoppable, and it always had the option to fall back on scavenging. I mean, we can't really assume team strategy, you know, it's an it's an if, and I don't know. Well, for Tyrannosaurs, they have Albertosaurus examples where a lot of them were found together at the dry island bone bed of varying ages, so maybe they live together as a family unit. It's like over 20 individuals, I think. Um... Does that apply to Tyrannosaurus? And was that even the case with Albertosaurus itself? Maybe. So it was definitely a solid high tier. Solid high? What? Come on. It had the best bite. You already acknowledged that. What was it? Six to... I seem estimates like 6,000 to 12,000 pounds of force. Pounds per square inch. That's a lot. That's <laughs> like getting hit by a truck at the same time as getting bitten. But then on top of that, it has... Some of the best smell ever, some of the best eyesight ever, and great hearing. It's made, it's perfectly designed for finding prey and eating it and killing it. And, and it's massive too, it's a big chunky body. It lives in an ecosystem with a lot of very tough herbivores that it had to survive and kill and fight. Okay, not to over uh, make this too cool sounding, but yeah, Tyrannosaurus was adapted for what it needed to do, and it was great at that. Um, probably one of the most efficient predators ever. Had so many bests and so much going for it. And probably smarter than the average dinosaur. I'm not going to say it's chimp smart or primate smart, but... Smarter than your, your average dino. B tier? Come on. A and also, it's the Tyrannosaurus. Yeah, the adult can do all these things and it's great, but it didn't compete with itself. The younger ones would be uh, leaner, faster, longer legs, chase smaller prey. They didn't compete with themselves as much as maybe another genus would have. They were able to occupy different niches and dominate different niches at the same time. So it's not even just a pro at one niche, it's a pro at several niches at once. The last B tier build I want to talk about. Well, is... the genus, you know, at once, not an individual at once. Is Triceratops. In terms of defense in a single direction, no build has ever come close to Triceratops. Their horns can deal massive damage in a single... I mean, okay. Fair enough, maybe I'd argue an elephant or a mammoth or something like that, but we'll alright. Even to giant carnivore builds like T-Rex. Looking at its stats, it's pretty clear that going head to head with this thing would end badly. This thing was pretty close to a modern day opossum in terms of brain- I mean, these, these studies are old and like I, I try to look up dinosaur intelligence stuff for my um, accuracy reviews and it's it's always very shaky stuff. I mean, this is from 1980. It's difficult to tell how intelligent an animal was just by looking at its brain cavity, brain casing. It's, it's a difficult business. Power. And as many of you should know from my Australia video, marsupials are some of the least intelligent mammals. However, the herd behavior that makes elephants so untouchable by predators was absent in the Triceratops build. As the There's some evidence that they lived in family groups. We don't have a, a big herd of Triceratops yet. We have that in other Ceratopsians. Um, Pachyrhinosaurus. Was it Centrosaurus, I believe? Or was it Chasmosaurus? I think Centrosaurus. They're mostly solitary, and this was due to their low intelligence stat. Because of that- No, no, it's not due to low intelligence. Again, their relatives did the same thing, and they probably weren't much smarter than Triceratops. Highly vulnerable from being attacked from behind, or from multiple angles at once. It was easily tricked into walking into ambushes set by carnivore mains, which pretty much always okay, made- Okay, that's pretty much of a sh that's a stretch right there. To have this very highly organized pack hunting where 
the younglings chase the big prey into the adults and even like modern lions aren't that organized about it they kind of just tackle whatever is that they're attacking wolves yes wolves are very smart strategize yeah okay i could see that but tyrannosaurus you can't just assume that level of coordinated behavior in an extinct animal and an archosaur nonetheless so archosaurs typically nine over 90 percent of the time not known for pack hunting the game over for the triceratops as powerful as this build is and it is powerful don't get me wrong I think it's definitely not... That was Zuni Ceratops, not Triceratops. Unless he's talking about the whole Ceratopsian or Ceratopsidae build over there. A top tier dinosaur and caps out at B tier. But, okay. but if he is talking about all of Ceratopsia, Ceratopsidae, like that, then he has to acknowledge that some of them did live in herds, and we know that some of them lived in big herds. So then that negates the point of it being weak in the back and not having cover and Anyways. Okay, so in A tier, we've got the dinosaurs, which were a bit smarter about how they invested their evolution points. <laughs> it wasn't a choice. They just... It's just natural selection. First, we have the Dromaeosaurs, the faction of dinosaurs that includes builds like Velociraptor, Deinonychus, and Utah Raptor. It's cool that, cool that he started off by calling them Dromaeosaurs, members of Dromaeosauridae. All right, cool. Choice ...to forego the gigantism ability that made dinosaurs so dominant in the first place, and try to... <laughs> I, I love how... Uh, they they just stole the JP3 Raptor designs. You have the male here, the females. Why is he using, what's it called, Tarbosaurus the Mightiest Ever in his dinosaur tier list? Isn't this supposed to be educational? Like, why are you using such a bad movie with such bad dinosaur models, designs? Why? I mean, he's also using Evolutionary Journey previously. Why? There's so many other documentaries, movies that you can use rather than this one. Oh, well. More of an evasive rushdown playstyle, sacrificing both their <laughs> HP and defense Just, Just like all the individual toes on the Sintel source. They probably would have had like a... I keep bringing this up, but like a single mass and then like a crat and a sheath on it buff their mobility and DPS as best they could. Most notably, they expect into buffing a single claw on each foot, which had two important functions. No, no, no. They wouldn't be kicking like that. That's an outdated reconstruction. Also, the feathering on, to, on this thing is so sparse. The first being that it could deal massive slash and stab type damage. And the no, they would not have been slashing at their prey with their uh, toe claws. No. This has been proved several times by now that they couldn't do this it would just puncture and then get stuck it wasn't particularly sharp of an edge it was pointy yes it can get into thin skin but it wasn't sharp so it can slice down second being that it gave them the ability to hook onto players that they were targeting using the pounce attack especially if they attacked in a group which they often did no no they did not often do this <laughs> No, stop it. They had the ability to weave in and out of their opponent's attack range easily, letting them bait out and dodge attacks. The one that that was a troodontid in a uh, march of the dinosaurs. That's sh their troodon should be called. I was gonna say Stenonicosaurus, but that would probably be the Alaskan troodontid instead. The drawback to this build was that if it never got careless. Oh, well, there's an ad. <laughs> Whenever I'm making a video, I put that they can't just throw ads into the middle of the video. So you can, you watch the ad at the start, and then you can enjoy the full thing, and maybe there'd be an ad at the end, which you can just not watch. You already watched the video. Lethal damage in a single hit. But overall, this faction was one of the most successful at the time, and easily able- And I appreciate how he didn't just put intelligence maxed out. Because that's that's a trope that has gone on for too long. So at least he avoided one major trope. Also in A tier we have Carcharodontosaurus, a build very similar to T. But 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 why would why Carcharodontosaurus or Carcharodontosaurus but not T Rex? T Rex 
is like a maxed out predator. So many maxed out stats. Maxed out vision, maxed out smell, maxed out bite, maxed out hearing. Why? <laughs> Instead of investing purely into bite force, maxing out base damage, Kakarodonosaurus spent its evolution points specking into advanced, serrated teeth. This gave their bite attack an increased chance to cause the heavy bleed status effect. Which okay, true. They were very serrated, very sharp teeth. Like, like knives in the mouth, but still a bite from T-Rex. You're not bleeding out, you're crippled at that point. <laughs> Drain the target's HP and stamina over time. This was more cost effective than pure bite force, and let them retain enough evolution points to spec into claws too, giving them a more well rounded. But their claws were. Well, their arms were still pretty small. Uh, maybe not as small as Tyrannosaurids or Bellosaurids, but they were still pretty small arms. They weren't going around slashing things. Combat style that could still cause lethal damage from a single bite. This strategy is similar to the one seen employed by the Komodo Dragon player base of today's meta. Well, to be fair, Komodo dragons have venom that the uh, anticoagulants that prevent the blood, the wound from clotting. So then it continues to bleed and then bleeds out. It gets tired and bleeds out. Takes a good nap. Tyrannosaurus was also one of the tankier carnivore builds and could shrug off a hit or two even from the builds that would normally devastate anything that they landed a hit on. <laughs> could Spinosaurus swing its arms like a grizzly bear? Probably not. This made them extremely good at PvP against the other carnivore builds at the time, making them an easy high tier candidate. But, but, but what about T-Rex? <laughs> I'm not this T-Rex fanboy like, yeah, T-Rex, the best at everything, oh my gosh, I love it. No, but if you're making a tier list like this, just and you're ranking them based on their abilities and their stats, T-Rex has a lot of really good abilities. The next build I have in E tier is Ankylosaurus, perhaps the best tank build ever to exist in the game. Okay, that's fair enough. That's a good assessment. This build essentially took the Segasaurus strategy and cranked it up to the most extreme it could. Instead that's a different show. That's probably a better show. I liked the most extreme as a kid. Oh look, it's a uh, young T-Rex. Back plates for intimidation. Ooh, and I like this ankylosaurus design here. Where it doesn't have like those nodosaur spikes off pointing to the side. No, it has like just these round osteoderms here. The ankylosaur players spec into armor, and instead of tail spikes, they opted for a club. Their armor was so there was a lot of new research on ankylosaurs actually um, damage found on the club and maybe it was from them whacking each other with their clubs and some rivalry display or something that made attacks from even the strongest carnivore mains pretty laughable while their club didn't have I don't know what documentary that was I didn't recognize that enlighten me in the comments high crit chance like the tail spikes did see but his his model isn't as good as the dinosaur revolution one it did do massive damage that could shatter bone. <laughs> the chunky watermelon round ankylosaurus, okay. Capable of crippling any player unfortunate to take a direct hit from it. Despite all of its defense and power, it was completely helpless if a player managed to flip it over. <laughs> this is the last day of the dinosaurs. I forgot about this scene. Oh, poor guy. For that reason, I can't place it in top tier. Wait, T-Rex just... They just have a killing Ankylosaurus, but no, but Ankylosaurus is higher than T-Rex. Because a good top tier will have no surefire counterplay. Last in A tier, we have Troodon. The Troodon. <laughs> Troodon. Okay, why is he using a scaly Troodon model here? Like, there are clearly no feathers on this thing. And even the name Troodon is very much contentious. It's a nomen dubium or a doubtful name. Even then, it should just be invalid at this point. Like, there are a few papers I've seen that still use Troodon. We should just move on from Troodon. It should be called Stenonicosaurus now. Or for some of them should be Stenonicosaurus. And the Alaskan Troodontid should just have a new name. It's clearly a new genus. Anyways. The only dinosaur build whose core strategy was based around the intelligence stat. Sure, other dinosaurs used team strategies or had advanced perception skills, both of which require some usage of intelligence. But Troodon was the only one to specifically tailor their build around having its brain be its best weapon. Yeah, but again, it's 
unclear how smart an extinct animal is. Yes, it had a very high brain mass to body ratio, but that doesn't really make it the smartest. Ben. Troodon had to sacrifice a lot to get this. High intelligence requires a lot of calories to maintain, so getting the kills required to sustain both a <laughs> Scaly Troodon. I haven't seen this documentary. It's probably from Curiosity Stream. It has to do with its partnership there, but large size and a large oh, well. brain was impossible, meaning that they had to give up gigantism as a trait. Okay, but so but we don't know. There's no evidence that Chodon made Chodon made made traps like with the insect catching this mammal. Instead of powerful dagger-like claws, Troodon opted for and, and the wrists are all pronated. Hard, Come on, what documentary is this? That could be used to pick up objects. The, the big eyes are nice, though. Okay, Spinal Estes. Oh, and Overwatch. Okay. Now Overwatch 2. I'm a Bastion main, by the way. Oh, I love Bastion and Overwatch. Especially now, when you could just, like, tank around and absolutely demolish people with his... Gatling gun or machine gun, whatever you want to call it. It's very possible that if non-avian dinosaurs weren't banned... In <laughs> that Tyrannosaurus, why did it look like the Joker? Where is it? Oh no. Strike a balance patch. Troodon players would have eventually... Are you kidding me? <laughs> He's really using this, the Troodon man? Ew. <laughs> this, this just assumes that human is the final form. Okay, we know crab is the final form, but... This just assumes that human's the final form, that evolution just leads to human, but no, <laughs> it's random, right? Natural selection. To become top tiers. He, he, no, that, that's so egotistical, kind of, that human's the best form, it's the final form, everything becomes human at some point. No. No, it does not. Humans. It becomes crap. But even though it was starting to gain the power to dominate its environment, it still had no way to combat the other top tiers, aside from just running away. So it definitely- They just call Edmontosaurus a top tier? We have the most overpowered dinosaur faction of all, the sauropods. Sauropods- Okay, had that's maybe a fair assessment here. I mean, with its immense size and, uh, the tail whip is kind of iffy, but it grows fast, it's huge, maybe lived in herds, who knows. Every tool they needed to counter all other dinosaur builds. They had the maximum HP stat possible for a terrestrial build, and because they used the herd strategy, oftentimes this meant that if a sauropod player was caught off guard and was under attack by several carnivore players, it could usually tank enough hits that its teammates would have time to rescue it. And Did sauropods live in herds? Wait, had there been sauropod herds found? Sauropod fossils are pretty difficult to come by. Even if you do find one, it can be fragmentary because it's difficult to cover and bury it all up to preserve it into a fossil when it's that big. So you might get a piece here, a piece there, although they're probably colonies when they co go to nest and lay their eggs. We, ha we have lots of different nests of sauropods congregated together, so at least we know that they did this together, or they came to a similar place to nest but that they always live together huh it's interesting to think about and of all the dinosaurs sauropods also had the largest attack range but they were still plenty powerful able to knock down enemies well out of reach of a counterattack. hmm this this is a point that i brought up in dinosaurs it's even fried that this whip tail probably not used as a weapon so may, maybe the rest of the tail could be swung into something but the whip part probably not because it that hits something at very high speed, then it's just gonna break its own bones too. So, yes, you've hurt the Allosaurus, but you have also brutally hurt yourself. Not brutally, maybe. Probably won't die from it, but very, very bad injury. And if they did get too close, a sauropod stop attack was literally the most devastating move in the game. Knocking the target down and deep- That is unless you're the Allosaurus in the Stephen Fry documentary where, uh, it just takes a nap and then it gets back up. ...dealing lethal damage. Lastly, their extreme height gave them a massive advantage for avoiding stealth attacks, as they could see much further than other players. In terms of Lance- Okay, I'm kind of getting... a similar problem with a lot of these, where a lot of it is just about 
how good they are at killing something or fighting something when that's not so much of the animal's life. Yes, it's a fun part to watch and look at and think about, but there are other aspects of a dinosaur's life besides how well did it kill things. A sauropod's long neck is very advantageous because it gives it a high feeding range. It can stay planted in one spot and then eat vegetation from a wide range of places. Or if you're like Brachiosaurus, you can forage high up and catch those leaves that maybe other herbivores couldn't get to. Um, so there are other things to think about than just, can it kill something efficiently? So, moving on. Superiority, sauropods truly were the most overpowered dinosaurs of all time. It's unfortunate that the devs chose to ban the dinosaurs during the KT balance patch, but alas, the meta was getting stale, so I understand why. <laughs> well, the dinosaurs weren't really banned. I'm sure he's gonna mention this, but... birds. Hopefully you enjoyed this look back- Oh, no, he didn't mention it! <laughs> ...the Mesozoic meta. If you enjoy watching videos- No, okay, he did not mention it. He did not mention birds. Okay, so then I have to say it. No, the dinosaurs did not get banned. I mean, a lot of them did, but um, there were a few birds that survived and then became the birds we know and love today. So they did not get completely banned. Um, Alright, so it seems like he's done with the video. Is the rest just like sponsorship stuff? Yeah, I think so. Okay, then that means we can cut it there. Yeah, it's it has some information that works and holds up. Shows footage from some good documentaries, but for every plus, there's a negative a documentary that's very inaccurate that's shown, or a fact, fact that's very wrong or outdated. So it's a very mixed bag, which is not what you want in a video like this, because Tirzu clearly has a lot of reach, way more reach than I'll ever have. And you figure that most of them come for extant animals, animals living today, and learning about those animals. So it's rare to talk about dinosaurs in that context. So these people are getting introduced to new ideas, new facts, new dinosaurs. But then a lot of the stuff that Tirzu is exposing them to is wrong, outdated, bad science, and kind of silly. Overall, I, I do like Tier Zoo. I do like watching his content. This video should probably be redone, or you should probably do more research before going into something like this, or seeing what the the ideas floating around are, how they're received. Like the aloe bite. You could have easily looked up the aloe bite and that everyone thinks this is a trash idea. I try to do this research too before I go into a video, but Sometimes there's an obscure paper that says, no, this wasn't the case, and refutes something that I say, and then I don't realize that it's in this obscure paper, like that happened with uh, Teddy Draco. It, it happens sometimes that there's something you don't catch, something that's hidden away, but he, he's talking about very general, big ideas that are common, that are out there. He could have easily done just a few quick Google searches and found no. Allosaurus did not do that. <laughs> I will continue to watch Tier Zoo. I am a fan. Yes, not everyone agrees with his methods. It's goofy, it's silly, but it's a fun way that's not too atrocious to teach about animals. Um, usually the facts are good. Usually the information is decent, so that's good at least. The video game format is kind of silly, but it's a sting. Right, it's this thing. So I'm not going to be too critical about it. Anyways, remember, if you enjoyed this video, to please leave a like, subscribe, and check out my social media. See you next time.